In this lecture, we're going to discuss one of the most important applications of molecular biology, which is polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. And so in this lecture, we're going to focus on um, learning the five different components that go into a PCR and what they all do as part of the reaction. We're going to talk about the cycles that go into a PCR reaction and what happens in each of these steps of denaturation, annealing, and extension. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how PCR compares to DNA replication in your cells. Right? And so just as a reminder, DNA replication is a process of synthesizing a complete new DNA strand using a DNA template. And in DNA replication, there's an enzyme called DNA polymerase that works to extend RNA primers and synthesize new strands of DNA. And so here you can see the template strand of DNA. Here's primase, this enzyme, which makes an RNA primer in green. And then DNA polymerase is able to add nucleotides to this existing RNA primer and extend that piece of DNA in the five prime to three prime direction. And the sequence of this new DNA strand is determined by the template strand on the bottom. That new strand is going to be complementary to the template strand, right? So if there's an A on the template strand, there will be a T or a thymine on the new strand. And so <clears throat> by understanding the principles of how DNA replication works and what enzymes are involved and what components, we can actually create a sort of similar reaction to DNA replication um, <clears throat> that allows us to create not a full entire copy of a piece of DNA, but a very, very specific sequence that we want to copy many, many times. And this reaction is called a polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, and PCR is a process that amplifies or makes many copies of a specific sequence of DNA. And it does this through repeated cycles of denaturation, annealing, and extension. And so you can actually see how small a PCR reaction is here on the left. It's usually done in these tubes, which hold about 200 microliters in total. So these reactions are anywhere from 25 to 100 microliters, which is pretty tiny. And <clears throat> these tubes, once the reaction components are mixed in the tube, can go into this machine here called a thermal cycler, which is what actually performs the temperature changes of denaturation annealing and extension and runs these like PCR reactions. And so the ultimate goal of a PCR is to make many, many copies of one specific piece of DNA, right? We're not replicating the entire piece of DNA. We're choosing just one specific area or piece, and we're making not just one copy like DNA replication, but many, many, many copies, billions of copies of that specific piece of DNA. And so what goes into one of those PCR reactions? There are five major components, um, the DNA template, primers, DNTPs or nucleotides, polymerase, and buffer. And I'm going to talk about what each one of these does <clears throat> on the next couple of slides. Right, and so in order for you to make specific copies of DNA, you need to include something that you're going to be able to copy right? A DNA template or blueprint. This template can be genomic DNA that's been isolated from cells. It can be plasmid DNA. Um, <clears throat> but this, temp this DNA serves as a template that you can copy via PCR. And the thing that allows you to decide which part of this DNA template you're going to amplify or copy are the primers. And there are two primers included in every PCR reaction, a forward primer, like you can see on the left, and a reverse primer. And those forward and reverse primers basically mark the beginning and end point of the piece of DNA that you're going to amplify. They flank the two ends of your DNA piece of interest, and <clears throat> they mark where the polymerase in the reaction will start replicating to amplify that specific piece. So you have a template that you're gonna copy or make something from. You have primers to specify what you're going to copy. 
And then if you want to make a new piece of DNA, you're going to need some monomers or nucleotides. In the case of a PCR reaction, usually um, those individual nucleotides, A, T, C, and G, are mixed together in a solution and referred to as DNTPs. And these can be strung together to create new specific pieces of DNA. And then <laughs> if you've got the pieces, you've got the template, you've got the primers to specify what you're amplifying, you're going to need an enzyme to do the work. And the enzyme that does the work in a PCR is a DNA polymerase enzyme called TAC polymerase. And so it's the same enzyme that's used in DNA replication, except this DNA polymerase that we use to do PCR reactions was originally isolated from a bacteria called Thermus aquaticus. T-A-Q um, in Thermus aquaticus is where that TAC name comes from. And so this DNA polymerase works at a pretty high temperature because these bacteria were originally found living in geysers like this one here. And so because these bacteria have to live at a high temperature, their enzymes have optimal temperatures that are quite high as well. And so TAC DNA polymerase has a very high temperature at which it works. Um, and it's kind of best works around 72 degrees Celsius. Um, and for reference, our body temperature is 37 degrees. So TAC works at about two times our normal body temperature. And then the last component here that's essential in a PCR after you add template, primers, nucleotides, and enzyme is a buffer that contains magnesium. And magnesium is important for TAC polymerase function. <laughs> magnesium acts as a cofactor for TAC polymerase, and without it, um, TAC polymerase won't be able to efficiently extend uh, chains of DNA. And so without this magnesium and these proper conditions and pH created by the buffer, DNA polymerase won't be able to really do much of anything, right? And so these five components are all added to a tube um, and mixed together. And then those reactions or these five components are put into the thermal cycler, which um, runs a reaction involving these three steps here. And so every PCR involves three steps, a denaturation, annealing, and extension steps. And a set of one denaturation, one round of annealing, and one extension is referred to as one cycle. And generally a PCR um, will repeat this cycle of denaturation, annealing, and extension 30 to 40 times. And in that repetition of 30 to 40 cycles, the DNA that you're interested in can become amplified from one single piece to billions of pieces. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens in each of these three steps of the cycle on the next couple of slides. So the first step in a PCR is denaturation. And denaturation happens... Um, <laughs> for about 15 to 30 seconds in the machine and um, occurs at about 95 degrees Celsius. And so a denaturation step is essential because 95 degrees Celsius is a very high temperature, is actually high enough to denature the two strands of DNA or separate them from each other. It will break the hydrogen bonds that exist between the nitrogen bases in the double-stranded molecule and it will separate one strand from another. You don't want to do this for too long or you can end up melting your DNA irreversibly. So this is quite a short step, but it's important because it allows enzymes access to the individual strands of DNA that they can then use as a template. So after the denaturation step, the thermal cycler will cool down to somewhere between 50 or 65 degrees for what's called the annealing step. And the annealing step is a step that allows your RNA primers, the forward primer and reverse primer you selected, to bind to the template strands of DNA. And you can see that here. These are individual primers and they're binding to those template strands. 
the temperature varies for annealing based on the sequence of your primers. And so some primers might require a higher annealing temperature, 65 degrees. Some might prefer a lower annealing temperature, but it all depends on the sequence of your primer. And so after those primers have annealed or stuck to the individual denatured DNA strands, DNA polymerase can carry out extension in the third step. And so DNA polymerase, the TAC polymerase we discussed before, is able to add nucleotides to the existing RNA primers during this extension step. Extension occurs at 72 degrees Celsius because that is TAC DNA polymerase's optimal temperature. It behaves best at 72 degrees and it efficiently adds nucleotides at this temperature. And we can decide how long the extension step should be based on the piece of DNA we're trying to amplify. Um, generally, the rule of thumb is that we would add one minute of extension for every thousand bases or kilobyte, kilobases of DNA. So if your DNA that you want to amplify is 1000 bases or 1 KB, the extension would be one minute. If the piece of DNA you want to amplify is 3000 kilobases or 3000 bases or, or 3 KB, it would be a three minute extension. So the extension time can vary based on the size of DNA that you are trying to amplify, right? And so you have one denaturation step, annealing of the primers, and then extension of those primers. And that is one cycle in the PCR, right? But that cycle is repeated again, denaturation, annealing, extension. And generally those cycles, <coughs> are repeated about 30 to 40 times. After 10 cycles, you have around a thousand pieces of your DNA of interest, that specific sequence you wanted to amplify. But by the time we hit 30 cycles of denaturation, annealing, and extension, you have over 1 billion pieces of that specific DNA you're interested in amplifying, which you can then do um, a lot of things with um, subsequent to this, including cloning or DNA sequencing, depending on what the goal um, of your experiments are. And so a PCR is a great way to take a small amount of template DNA and then amplify it and create many, 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 many copies of one specific piece of DNA that you're interested in.